And think about this. It was the day after the War Measures Act was declared that Pierre Laporte was murdered. The War Measures Act did nothing to benefit federalism, quite the opposite. Um, if Quebec turned away from terrorism, it was the death of the murder of Pierre Laporte that did it, the distaste of that, because it was six short years later that the Parti Québécois under René Lévesque was elected in office with Pierre Trudeau in office in Ottawa. Trudeau's actions in October 1970 did nothing to inspire uh, national unity. Now, we could say on federalism itself that, that you know, there, there certainly was a raging battle in Quebec about their place in Canada. And Trudeau always used to say, I'm going to put Quebec in its place, and Quebec's place is in Canada. And he did that, well, as you know, through official bilingualism by bolstering the ranks of the military with, with the making it uh, bilingual as well, by um, social reforms, economic reforms. Um, so he made, to use Robert Ross's term, he made federalism profitable for Quebec. And of course, that's why he was winning a great number of seats. He also, I think, helped federalism in the 1980 Quebec referendum, the very first referendum on sovereignty association. And famously at the Paul Sauvé Arena, delivering a speech promising constitutional renewal for Quebec. He said, we're not for the status quo, well, we're for constitutional renewal. We'll put our seats on the line as Quebec MPs to, to respond to your wishes and to your aspirations. The truth is, in making those commitments to Quebec in 1980, Pierre Trudeau lied. He misled Quebec about his intentions. Then, after having helped to win the re referendum, he declared war on the provinces, saying that he was prepared to give them a knockout punch to deliver the constitution that he wanted. Now remember, this is the time we're in deep economic recession, unemployment at incredibly high rates, the deficit sky high, and the only thing that matters to Pierre Trudeau is the constitution. So what did he say about it? What was he prepared to do to unify the nation, to, to, to have a united uh, constitution? He said, let me just say, at this last stage, I felt we needed almost a pooch, a coup de force, a knockout punch to the provinces. This is the Prime Minister of Canada uh, rewriting 130 years of, of history to say, I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to go to, um, uh, to use sort of some thug-like thug tactics. Perhaps he was showing his admiration for you know, his communist friends and how they uh, um, sort of one whole power. Say he was admiring a country like China. There's other Trudeau's who like to admire <laughs> China. He set aside the advice from his bureaucrats. They say Stephen Harper doesn't listen to his bureaucrats. Well, if there's ever a prime minister who set aside the advice from his bureaucrats, it was Pierre Trudeau. Because he said, I do not want to hear the voices of those who are concerned about the fabric of the nation. Even leading members of Trudeau's party, longtime liberal friends, were sharply critical of the day the new constitution was proclaimed. Here is Jean Sauvé, who was the speaker of the, uh, the House of Commons. When Pierre Trudeau signed the constitution, she said, my God, what have we done? You know, we passed the constitution over the objections of the government of Quebec. Jean Marchand, who came into uh, politics with Pierre Trudeau, called Pierre Trudeau a traitor for, for what he did. <coughs> Bob Stanfield had it right. Bob Stanfield had it right when he said, Pierre Trudeau's Constitution of 1982, he said, no premier of Quebec within living memory, federalist or separatist, would have agreed to the Constitution Act of 1982 that Trudeau implemented. We gave the separatists a stick to beat us with. Over what? Over what? What did we gain with this? You know, anytime we wanted to amend our Constitution, we raised our hands and we asked the British Parliament, could you give us an amendment so that you know, for example, we can have unemployment insurance or we could have Supreme, uh, sorry, uh, senators retire at the age of 75. And it was just like a rubber stamp. Um, you know, so we did not have constitutional paralysis here. And there remains a price to be paid for Trudeau's Act um, in 1982. And we saw an example of that in 1995 in the Quebec referendum. The price to be paid was we, we the federalism, Canada as we know it, uh, came down to a rounding error uh, when the Federalist side won by just a whisker. 
And where was Pierre Trudeau in that 1995 referendum? Was he making great speeches? Was he on the side of federalism? No. He was sidelined. Jean Chrétien said that if Pierre Trudeau had appeared in that referendum campaign, he would have caused a riot, the great champion of federalism. What Pierre Trudeau did was he made federalists in Quebec look weak and powerless, and he, and, he, and he strengthened the separatists by refusing to compromise on his views. And he did the same thing with the Beach Lake uh, Accord and the Charlottetown Accord. Now, you may like Beach Lake and or not like Beach Lake, but it's quite something for a prime minister to come out of retirement. Um, to try to, to kill the only prospect of a deal that would have dealt with Quebec being sidelined in the Constitution. Um, Pierre Trudeau's uh, cabinet minister, fellow cabinet minister Francis Fox said, the reason that uh, Pierre Trudeau opposed Beach Lake was he did not want Mulroney to succeed where he had failed. Gordon Robertson, former clerk of the Privy Council, said this of Trudeau. Now, clerk of the Privy Council, these are people who choose Choose their words very carefully. He said of Pierre Trudeau's opposition to Beach Lake, and it failed only because of Clive Wells and Pierre Trudeau. Um, he said, nothing, I think, in Canadian history rivals the irresponsibility Trudeau, the former prime minister, displayed in coming out of retirement to destroy the only pro prospect of an agreement that would bring Quebec into willing acceptance of the Constitution that he himself later admitted was the result of a coup de force. Um, William Thorsell, editor of the Globe and Mail, said this of Pierre Trudeau when he defeated Beach Lake. He said, the Bloc Québécois is Pierre Trudeau's child, and Lucien Bessard his most enduring legacy. Now, a constitution of the country is meant to unify, not divide, a nation. Sir Johnny Macdonald would not have done what Pierre Trudeau did, either with Laurier or, or, or Pearson or any other prime minister. Now, before I conclude on national unity, let me just add this one point, because it wasn't just Quebec, um, you know, and the consequences of which the Liberal Party got largely wiped out of the province of Quebec after Trudeau left. But think about the West. When you're trying to build a nation, you're trying to represent all of Canada. When you want all of Canada to succeed, um, what did Pierre Trudeau do to, to, to attract support from the West? And remember this, after 1968, Pierre Trudeau won zero seats in, in Alberta, not one after 1968. He won 14% of the seats in British Columbia, 14%. 15% in Manitoba, 8% in Saskatchewan. Now, how did Pierre Trudeau return this favor? You know, did he want to reach out to them to, to bring them in? With only two of 77 seats west of the Ontario border, Trudeau launched an all out of assault on the energy sector, the results of which, or the consequences of which, resonate to this day. The gains that were being made in the energy sector by rising oil prices offended Pierre Trudeau's socialist sensibilities. We were always energy self-sufficient in Canada. You know, the oil price shock was not a negative to Canada, it was to be a positive to Canada. But to Trudeau, he said what concerned him is the country did not have a system in place to ensure that windfall gains from oil prices were shared equitably. We didn't have a system in place to make sure <coughs> everything was shared equitably. So what did he do? He killed the goose, the golden goose, um, and undermined job creation, investment, uh, employment in the West. Thus do we see destructive socialism meet regional alienation. Now, now, you may look at the evidence that I present and draw a different conclusion than I've drawn. But let's have the debate based on the, on the, on the, on the real evidence, on the real data. Um, you may have things about Pierre Trudeau that you really like. I'm happy to, in, in Q&A, if you've got time, to, to go through all of that. But if you care about Canada and its future, you have to know who we are and where we've come from. You can't understand the national unity question today unless you understand Pierre Trudeau's destructive record. Or you may not appreciate the importance of the relationship we have with our allies until you saw what happened to Canada during Trudeau's record in office. We may yet again be tempted, tempted with Trudeau-like socialist economic prescriptions, unless we acknowledge the damage that was done. We have to learn from our successes and our failures. And it's because history matters that I believe it was time to write the truth about Pierre Trudeau. Thank you.